Now in this session we talk about the drying curve. Now if you draw the moisture content versus time. So initially the moisture content reduces slowly. So this is my point A. Up to certain point the moisture content will reduce slowly. Now this is the time required the material and the water to come to its boiling point. So this is the time when the temperature of the material and the moisture that increases and then we have the steady decrease of the moisture content. And then after some time it becomes slower and maybe down the road it even more slower. Now we denote this point to be C and this point to be D and this point to be E. Now drying rate we define as to be rate of change of moisture content per unit area. Now area becoming constant so this drying rate is simply slope of this line. The slope is negative decreasing so you need a negative sign to make the rate to be positive. Now what happens here is that between A and B the temperature increases. So between B and C there is a const continuous supply of water from the material itself to its surface so that the water vapor is removed continuously. However, between C and D, these start to decrease and there is not enough water on the surface to be removed. And then from D and E, we have even less supply of water to the surface so that the rate further decreases. And you see that after a certain point, no more vapor is removed. Now, as I said, this drying rate is simply the negative of the slope of this curve. So if you draw it, you will initially it's zero and it slowly increases and goes to some value at point B. Suppose it goes there. So if I plot drying rate over here on a different axis and then from B to C there is a constant rate here and from C to D there is a decrease and from D to E there is a further decrease to some value 0 again. So this is my point A, B, C, D, E. So now this is the curve between moisture content and time and also like the drying rate versus time. Now if you plot drying rate versus the moisture content, how does it look like? Now for this case we have, so this point A, that's the point where the moisture content is the maximum. So point A here is something on this line. The drying rate is suppose 0 over here and this point B is the constant drying period over here. So you see here we have for a very short time there is this curve. And now from B and B to C the drying rate remains constant so and the moisture content is decreasing. So moisture content increases in this direction, so it is decreasing in this direction, so we'll have some so up to B to C. And from C to D, there's a decrease. And from D to E, there is further decrease. So here we have the point here, C, D. In between C and D and D and E, there may be different behavior depending on the process. So there will be different shape of this curve. From A to B, this is pretty narrow for many cases. We can have an idealized form of this curve as something like this one. Now this is done to simplify the mathematical formulation. However, in reality, this straight line behavior may not be possible. Now this point, this is called critical moisture content, this is called the equilibrium moisture content in terms of this total moisture. Now we have seen the definition of free moisture to be Xt minus X equilibrium. Now equilibrium moisture content as we defined that the moisture that cannot be removed. Now if we express this curve in terms of free moisture instead of this total moisture, what it will look like? So if you plot 
in terms of free moisture instead of the total moisture. We simply subtract this x e value from the total moisture here. So we'll get this car will just shift here and then we'll have. So this is our free moisture x and this is the drying rate and this will be our xc and this is a free moisture that's zero.